You're listening to the Greek's Gridiron, live with Ethan Haristadoulou. What's up, everyone, and welcome back to more of the Greek's Gridiron. I am Ethan Hrstadoulou, and today on this June 16th to 2022, I am talking to you guys today about my top five immediate impact rookies for this upcoming season in the NFL. There's a handful of guys that are going to look pretty good this season, but I think I've come up with a list of five that I think are very strong candidates to really show up and show out for their respective teams. So comment down below. Let me know who your top five are. And even if you don't have a top five, let me know of a couple of names that you expect to really show off this very first season in the NFL of their very early, early careers. Make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and let's talk the top five, shall we? So coming in at number five, excuse me, my very first one here, I'm going to start with a wide receiver from Green Bay, and that is Christian Watson from North Dakota State. The reason I'm talking Christian Watson here at the number five spot is because, well, obviously, with what happened earlier in the offseason, the Packers went ahead and traded Devontae Adams away, and it left a gaping hole in their offense at the number one spot for the wide receiver position. Now, when you look at the rest of the wide receivers over there in Green Bay, no one really screams at wide receiver number one more than the potential that Christian Watson brings to the table. The guy is 6'4", near 210 pounds. He has 4'3", speed. He has a very rare combination of size and speed that any wide receiver coach drools over and any quarterback would love to have the potential opportunity to throw to and when I talk the quarterbacks obviously we're talking Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay what better quarterback to be able to maximize the potential upside that a guy like Christian Watson brings to the table and it's not like Christian Watson is just big and fast no I mean he's a very productive wide receiver or he was while he was in college and then you couple that with the fact that when you look everywhere everything that like that I've read about him regards to the fact that he did a good job polishing up his route running during his final season there with the opportunity now to play with Aaron Rodgers, the big thing for him is to do exactly what Devonte Adams was doing and still does as a wide receiver while he was in green Bay. He needs to continue to just polish those routes and obsess over the opportunity to link up and get on the same page and build a connection with his quarterback in Aaron Rodgers. This has a lot of potential. I really like Christian Watson. Like I said, he is like prototype size and speed that you want for a premier top flight wide receiver. You could probably put on maybe like five more pounds of muscle to really give him that game playing strength to, you know, manhandle some corners. But like, this is, this is one of the, I think the under the radar ones, because it's a second round selection that could end up being one of the better picks in this year's draft. If him and Aaron Rodgers can get on the same page, he has everything you want in physicals. It's just a matter of getting that connection down and becoming the elite type of route runner that guys like Aaron Rodgers love to throw to. Now, coming in at my number four spot, we're looking at a linebacker here, and we are talking Jacksonville Jaguars linebacker Devin Lloyd from Utah. Talk about a linebacker who brings everything to the table that you want to have. He has this good size. He has, you know, good athleticism. He checks all the boxes, awesome physical like attributes, very aggressive type of guy. He can fit into multiple linebacker roles. He brings everything to the table that you want to see from a linebacker and into a linebacking corpse that is fairly barren over there in Jacksonville. He is an immediate upgrade and a guy that I look at as okay, this is someone who could potentially step in and be like the quarterback of the defense for the Jacksonville Jaguars at that linebacking spot. I love what he brings to the table. He is a true leader, and he was while he was at Utah. He had 43 total tackles for loss over the three se- last three seasons that he played over there. I mean... He, his coverage is probably like the biggest concern. Is he going to be able to keep up with some of the faster guys over the middle? I mean, again, he's an, he's athletic. He's not the most athletic linebacker out there. But when you just talk like, th- give me a linebacker. You want a guy that's six three, about two hundred and thirty to forty pounds, something like that, and he can run with the majority of the best of them. Like he'll be able to keep up with tight ends and things like that. Devin Lloyd is that guy. I think he provides a massive boost for the Jacksonville Jaguars on the defensive side and. I would feel silly to leave him off this list. He brings a lot of potential upside, and I think he's going to be excellent for that defense there. Then coming in at the number three spot, we're looking at an edge rusher here and a guy that I know the Giants are excited about. 
Kayvon Thibodeau, big man, he is going to be a problem over there in New York. And part of the reason why has to do with Aziz Ojolari, who I talked about in my video yesterday. If you did not check that out, we did top five breakout candidates for year number two of this upcoming season here. So anyone from the draft class of last year, we talked Aziz Ojolari then, and now we're talking Kayvon Thibodeau because part of the reason Aziz Ojolari should have an even bigger season than he did his first year is because of this guy right here, a game breaker who is going to have a massive chip on his shoulder one because of the fact that you know at one point he was considered the consensus best and then all of a sudden like kind of just started to slip out of nowhere and then two the conversation of oh his heart isn't actually really in the game like some people would like there is a massive chip on Kayvon's shoulder right now and I think that you know it, if you want to fuel someone to be the absolute best that they can question their ability, question their love for what they do, and you're going to get the absolute best out of them. It is a, it's a recipe for disaster for the rest of the league, not the Giants here. I'm really excited to see what Thibodeau does over there in New York. And I think the biggest piece for me with this whole situation is that Kayvon Thibodeau went to exactly where he wanted to go. And he even said that himself. He's playing in New York for the New York football Giants. That does matter at the end of the day. I, I'm not going to say it is the deciding factor on why some players do and don't make it when it comes to being drafted, but when you go to a team that you want to play for, you know, and you really idolize growing up, or you just have a ton of respect for growing up as a fan and then becoming a player in the league, I think it does matter to an extent to be able to go to that team that you really wanted to go to because it just gives you that extra little bit of oomph in what you're trying to do because you want to prove it for that team. I'm not saying that nobody's going to be excited to play for the Jaguars. We just talked about Devin Lloyd, but even in Devin Lloyd's situation, I bet you there would be just a tiny bit more if he was able to have gone to like his favorite team growing up or just one of the you know elite storied teams. I think that goes without saying that when you're playing for an organization like the Giants, it gives you just a little bit more that you want to bring to the table. Then coming in at number two, we are looking at a cornerback here, and we are talking the cornerback for the Kansas City Chiefs, Trent McDuffie, who finds himself in a cornerback one situation here now that Charvarius Ward has departed from the Chiefs. I think Trent McDuffie has all the skills and then some to really step in and be that cornerback one for this team. He's playing alongside Fenton on the other side, who played outside for them and really well last season as well. I think that, um, I almost said Charverius Ward, excuse me, Trent McDuffie, uh, he is going to fit into the role, and I think he's going to succeed. He's brought in, and he's going to have to take on some really good wide receivers in the AFC. It's no secret how loaded the AFC has become this offseason, and it was clear the Chiefs understood what was going on, and with the loss of Charverius Ward, they could not pass up the opportunity to bring in a guy like McDuffie. And a lot of people look at McDuffie as one of the most complete cornerbacks in this draft class he should be successful when it comes to press man coverage or off ball you know zone like whatever it is that he needs the, McDuffie can do it and do it at least to a, an extent that it should be effective on the defense am I saying he's going to be the next Darrell Revis Champ Bailey type of guy no but what I'm saying is that he has a lot of potential upside and you know the sky's the limit for what McDuffie brings to the table here and I, I mean he's coming off a season where he literally allowed only 16 catches off of 296 passing snaps I mean 300 times you, you drop back to defend the pass and only 16 balls are caught like that's literally below one like what I don't even know what the percentage of that is I don't know if that's below one percent but I mean it, it's probably what is it eight um I'm trying to do some mental math here you're sitting around like a four percent reception rate off of that somewhere around that ballpark there it was something like that I don't know the exact number but it's something along those lines he's a bona fide competitor and I think that he brings a lot to the table for the Chiefs love the pick I love what he is I love the player that he is and I'm really excited to see him and then for my number one guy the and I talk, I've talked about him a couple of times in certain videos here, and I, I, you know, gushed over him when I was doing the Ravens draft class. If you are not excited as a Ravens fan about what Kyle Hamilton could potentially bring to this team, I don't know what you're doing. Kyle Hamilton was a consensus top five guy. A lot of draft boards had him in the top five, and if not, like six or seven. And he fell all the way down to the Baltimore Ravens. It is like a travesty that the rest of the league even let that happen. You are taking Kyle Hamilton, who again, considered one of the best players in this draft, go to an organization like the Ravens who pumps out defensive players like madmen over there and produces 
elite talent that constantly has to go because they, they just can't keep all the talent on the roster because of money restrictions, you're going to bring him a, a, like a so well-polished safety, put him in that defensive scheme with the coaching staff that they have over there. I'm not saying he is Ed Reed, but if you are looking for someone who can step in and fill that void that Ed Reed left all those years ago, Kyle Hamilton playing alongside Marcus Williams, the newly acquired safety they got from the, from the Saints. I mean, just look out trying to throw into that secondary. Couple that with the fact that like everyone that was hurt last year is going to be coming back for them now. The secondary in Baltimore is going to be a problem, and Kyle Hamilton is going to be a big reason for that. Lockdown, no fly zone is all I've really got to say. That on paper, that's what this is really looking like. I am beyond excited to see what Kyle Hamilton does over there in Baltimore. And he, when you look at like value at the pick of selection, I don't think any selection in this year's draft beats out Kyle Hamilton being taken where he was. Because again, he was supposed to be off the board well before Baltimore was picking. And if I was in that like that draft war room, I. I I'm assuming everyone is probably jumping for joy and in disbelief that Kyle Hamilton is still sitting there for them to select at that point. I, I can't believe it. Shout out to the Ravens for making that selection there. He is going to be a star in this league. And if there's if there's anyone that's like sure bet to be the best, not the best, but one of the best picks to come out of this draft, probably going to be Kyle Hamilton. But that is my top five players to make immediate impacts as rookies in this year's draft class. Let me know again who you guys think in the comment section down below. I appreciate you guys. As always, I will see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.